Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to my studio. It's so good to have you. I'm here working on my new comic book, but I'm taking a little break. Don't worry, we're going to get back to superheroes doing funny stuff in the street real soon. But I wanted to take a minute here to talk to you about superhero movies. You guys have taken some of my superhero videos over the top. Millions of views. So you know I know what I'm talking about when it comes to superheroes. With that in mind, here's my superhero movie and TV pitches, bitches. First and foremost, for all of us, I'm sure, is Batman. He's the one that Hollywood has done the best job of turning a superhero into a movie. I love the Dark Knight trilogy so much, but there's two omissions that I think would have fit with that universe so well. The Penguin and the Riddler. There was once a rumor that Stephen Colbert was going to play the Riddler, and I pictured him being this character where the Joker has pushed Batman in the previous movie to the brink, to the edge of his morals and his conviction, but the Riddler's going to drive him to the edge of sanity. And I'm picturing Bruce Wayne in the Batcave. It looks like a beautiful mind where he's got all strings holding stuff together and pictures all over the place and papers all over the floor and Alfred's coming down trying to talk to him and he, Batman can't even hear him. He's just, he's going crazy and he's put, seeing connections where there aren't any and he's driven insane. But of course he rises up and overcomes. The Penguin would be this international arms dealer character and probably talk like that but hates it that people call him the Penguin. He'd be like this God of War kind of figure where he's uh, selling arms to various rebel armies and to uh, non-official governments and it starts turning into where like you know Batman is seeing where the western governments are kind of in on it and he's seeing just the enormity of how big corruption is on a global scale and his challenge there is this whole thing of like what can one man do even if he's Batman but don't worry he would overcome he's Batman he always does I really hope that this particular incarnation of Batman in the movies with Ben Affleck is going to do its thing and lead up to the reboot, which is going to be whoever's Bruce Wayne in the Gotham TV show. Once that show is done, it ends with him turning into Batman, and now he's Batman in the movies, because that's what we all wanted to see happen with Smallville and Superman, and it... The next subject is near and dear to me, not only because he's my favorite character, Spider-Man, but because I've been saying this is the move since before they rebooted the movie series. What you need to do to really make Spider-Man work is to do it as a weekly live action TV show. Basically, the pitch is that it's Smallville, but cut the crap. So you put it in the city, you have it with the costumes and the villains and everything, and it takes place in New York City. The special effects have come far enough now that it would look awesome. To do Spider-Man as a weekly one-hour TV show would work so well because you have the pilot where he gets his powers. It's two hours. You start with Peter Parker in high school, and over a nine-year run, you have him graduate high school, go through college, and have his first few years as an adult living in New York City. Season one would would end with a two-part episode with the Sinister Six. Season two or three would end with the death of Captain Stacy. You bring Mary Jane Watson in about that time, you spend two years playing up the romance and the death of Gwen Stacy. She gets thrown off the bridge by the Green Goblin at the end of season four or five. When Spider-Man gets married at the show, it will be the end of season maybe six or seven, but you play it up as this kind of maybe potentially foolhardy thing that he did getting married kind of way too young and we start to see the pressure that that has on Peter Parker's life because by the time you get to season seven and eight you're introducing the black cat and he's starting to you know get tempted away from these things that he was attached to in high school and college as he's now kind of like uh, meeting other people and doing other things as a grown-up in New York City you could even have a crossover with Daredevil and Luke Cage and all these other guys that they're already doing shows with how cool would that be there's so much story and so many villains that you could get nine seasons of a show without having to make up anything new Hollywood please make that show I want to watch it so bad Next, I want to talk about the Fantastic Four. They're announcing all kinds of casting news, and I'm sure they got a lot of great ideas about where they want to go with this, but I've got the most perfect idea for the Fantastic Four movie. You start it off with an oil leak down below the water in the ocean, kind of like that BP business that was happening a couple of years ago. And it's Reed Richards who steps in and is able to plug it and save the day. Hurrah, hurrah. Uh, the next thing we see happening is there's this guy called Prince Namor, who's like some weird European prince. Nobody knows quite where he's from, but he owns the corporation that owns the oil company that was causing the spill. Uh, so kind of the world's looking at him like they don't know what to make of him. They think he's a spoiled billionaire. But behind the scenes, you see that he was really like not cool with it at all. Over the course of the movie, Namor is trying to like 
uh, gave corporations to stop doing what they're doing to pollute the oceans. But at the same time, he starts finding out just how much it's his own company and his own money that is owning all of these companies that are contributing to the problem. So at the end of the movie, Dr. Doom, in his attempt to destroy America with this monster coming out of the sea that caused the oil leak in the first place, and Namor getting it twisted in his head to think that Dr. Doom and the Fantastic Four, like good guys, bad guys, whatever, they're all the same, they're all people, people suck, people are going to ruin the planet, so he goes crazy, rips his suit off and turns into the Submariner and goes on this rampage, like destroying all of like these oil rigs that he actually owns, but people don't know that because your average guy just watching it on the news thinks that it's this crazy guy when really it's Prince Namor the whole time. So, you know, the, the Fantastic Four has to fly into action and you get that classic thing of the human torch and Namor like fighting over New York with the wave kind of crashing in and stuff. That would be a hot way to do a Fantastic Four movie and it would touch on so much stuff that's like already going on and already in the consciousness. Oh, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is superhero movies in general. Where are they going to go after we've got the Avengers thing has run its course and the Justice League thing has run its course? See, for me, part of the reason why superheroes are so awesome and so popular is because they mean so many different things to so many different people. Right now, the superhero movies that are coming out are awesome. We are so spoiled as fans to be getting these movies three four five six a year we're so spoiled but it would be fun to see a different take on these characters once it's not new anymore the ones that are coming out now they're all sort of in the same tone the ones that marvel makes themselves they've kind of got more humor to them than what the competition's doing but they're all still very 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 straight ahead what will be really fun is to just see them go in some really wild new directions just to spin it out and try different things and see where it goes. Because you can with these kinds of icons. Remember a few years ago when that picture of two Muppets as X-Men was going around as like a viral thing? Why not a movie where the Muppets are the Marvel Universe? That would be awesome. How about a Pixar Spider-Man movie? How cool would that be? What about a new movie that takes place in the Batman 1966 universe? Universe. Oh my god, how cool would that be? You could even give it more resonance by including, like, from our historical vantage point, you know, political stuff that was going on in the time while still keeping it pop and snappy with the colors and the campiness. It'd be great. If you're doubting me, take a look at that straight to video movie called Return to the Bat Cave. They had actors playing Adam West and Burt Ward in those costumes, reenacting the making of that show. That proves that you can make it work with other actors playing those versions of those characters. I don't know about you, but I would love to see a 1966 themed Batman movie come out now with today's special effects and today's sophistication in the story and the filmmaking. Oh, that will be so good. What do you think about my ideas for the direction of superheroes in movies and TV? Is one of my ideas your favorite or do you think you've got a better one? Either way, let me know in the comments. Every week, I'm picking one of the people who comment on my video and announcing a winner who's going to get an original drawing by me. This week's winner, Pika Muffin XOXO. Thanks so much for your comment, Pika Muffin, and to all of you for watching and for commenting. It means the world to me. I'm here making my new comic book, and as you can tell from the way I talk about this stuff, this is what I love, this is what I know, this is what I think about, and hopefully one day it'll be me making your superhero movie. How cool would that be? Uh, keep watching, subscribe to the channel if you ain't already follow me on instagram and twitter and connect with me on facebook where i post all kinds of drawings and behind the scenes stuff and uh, it's a lot of fun thanks so much for watching everybody i'm getting back to work on my new comic book right now but if you want to read other comic books by me you can read them for free on my website seanward.net slash comics check it out have fun reading that and we'll see you right back here next week see you soon